Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we are going to introduce our Kubernetes upstream training events in Japan. And hope today's talk will allow your interest and join us. I'm Shu Muto. I'm working at NC Solution Innovators. In Kubernetes community, I'm one of maintainer of Kubernetes dashboard, and I'm also CNC ambassador, CNCJ organizer, and Kubernetes upstream training Japan organizer. Good morning, everyone. My name is Xie Ziyi, and also I'm also one of the CNCJ organizer and Kubernetes upstream training organizer. So, Muto-san, open source sounds fascinating, but isn't the use of open source at your own risk? What value outweighs the risk? That's a great question. Yes, uh, the license usually says the OSS is used at your own risk, but there are various values in OSS that outweigh such risks. Not only is OSS itself free to use, Mm, but the power of the community uh, that develops OSS is a major attraction. So it's more than just getting free software. Uh, exactly. Uh, it's about collaboration. When the developer wants to investigate or improve the OSS, you will contact a global network of OSS developers, and it provides developers with a great deal uh, of learning and inspiration. What are the specific benefits? Well, uh, we can acquire new skills, uh, build a track record of open contributions, and even create new values through open innovation. Uh, the purpose of uh, contributing to OSS is to grow both as a developer and as a company. That sounds amazing. But isn't it hard to contribute? Uh, not so hard, but there are some barriers for Japanese developers to contribute. Uh, that's why we created the Kubernetes upstream training in Japan, uh, inspired by the new contributor workshop from the uh, contrib uh, Kubernetes contributor summit. We've been tailored it specifically for the Japanese developers. Oh, really? How's the difference? Um, we focused on providing uh, practical hands-on training to help Japanese developers step into the uh, world of open source. And by the way, what are all these barriers and challenges you've been talking about? Okay, look, uh, these are things that we consider to be barriers. Oh, I see. So the language barrier is not only a problem in Japan, I think it's also in the other non-English English speaking countries. That's right, uh, but Japan is an uh, island nation, so there were not many opportunity to talk to foreigners, especially in the past, and for an old guy like me. Uh, nowadays, English education in Japan has progressed a little, uh, and many tourists come, but for many Japanese people, language barrier still remains. Also, the slide shows culture barrier. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. I think not being fluent in English is one factor, uh, but I think Japanese people who miss opportunity to speak uh, because they are shy or thinking too much. I see. That's why we are here to encourage Japanese developers. That's why. Uh, please tell us about our goals. So we provide opportunities to walk you through the whole contribution process, and we provide a place where Japanese developers can make friends and solve Kubernetes-related problems in Japanese. And the key message we want to deliver is that you can say anything, even if your English is not fluent. Don't be afraid. All of the communities are in kind. Well, uh, please introduce what exactly does the training provide? So it starts with the introduction to the Kubernetes community 
and we teach his participants to how to uh, show them how to guys start contributing. And also we have hands-on sessions where we will show, uh, we will cover everything from creating pull request to merging it. Great, uh, please tell us uh, more about the features of this training. So it's all conducted in Japanese and it's been held in uh, in person, remote and hybrid. So we uh, that allows students and office workers from all over the Japan to participate. And I hope that more people will join us. Uh, what about the folks who lead these sessions? So they are actual maintainers and reviewers who share their real world experience. And uh, we bring in lecturers from different companies so they can provide different perspectives and use cases. Uh, that sounds fantastic. And we have hosted 10 events since uh, 2019, uh, even during COVID-19, right? Yes, and thankfully there are over 220 uh, people folks attended, and about 72% of participants have successfully merged their first pull request. Some have even started their contribution journey because of this event. Those are impressive results, and look at these pictures, and looks like everyone is having a great time. I hope so, and this is also thanks to the support of events organizers. Thanks to the Cloud Native Days Tokyo, Cloud Native Days Online, QFest Tokyo, Okinawa Open Days, Open Source Summit Japan, and not to mention the Kubernetes uh, communities and CNCF. We couldn't have done it without your help, and we really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, from this year, uh, the training has been incorporated into the Cloud Native Community Japan as a special interest group. Uh, she and CJ will be introduced next keynote from Nakamura-san. Also, uh, the trainer have been diversified and training materials have been updated to better fit the current situation. That's fantastic news. It, sh uh, it will surely make the sessions even more impactful. And I'm excited to see how this will enhance the learning experience for everyone involved. For those who are concerning about what to contribute and hesitating about uh, whether to join us, uh, you can get involved in a way that suits you. Uh, there are really many ways to uh, contribute this includes bug reporting and documentation, and you can start doing these things right away. So coding is just one of the ways to doing it, isn't it? It's not just about writing and testing patches to fix bugs and add new features. Exactly. Documentation and translations are especially recommended for fast contributions. Uh, it's important because uh, all users see it but it's very hard work to update a large amount of documentation when features change. So documentation seems like a very helpful contribution for the whole community. Not only it will help you understand the functions of OSS, also good for improving our English skills. Also, uh, you can start with what you find easy uh, and what you need, or you can establish a OSPO and do it organizedly, <coughs> organizationally. Let's participate in open innovation, uh, get new stimulation and learning as a developer or company, and continue to grow. So you should definitely dive into our events to get more information. And don't forget to follow us for updates and the opportunities to contribute. I'm now showing the homepage of CNCJ and Kubernetes upstream training, and we will keep updating. So please scan this QR code if you're interested. The community is here to support you every step of the way. Uh, we are waiting for you to join us. And this is the end of talk, our talk. Thank you for listening.